So, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear panel, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about a study we conducted in Mount Sinai. So, this is uh, my, I have no financial disclosures to declare. Um, the rationale for endovascular therapy in femoropopletal artery disease. Uh, the revascularization is fundamental in patients with CLI, and it's appropriate for patient who, patients who have claudication after exhaustion of uh, um, conservative approaches. Uh, we used to think that uh, autologous vein graft is the con considered the gold standard revascularization method in this uh, segment. Um, however, early complications like bleeding, infections, um, prolonged hospitalizations, and hematomas um, are a considerable limitation for this approach in all patients as a first-line uh, treatment. Endovascular therapy, on the other side, offers um, a less invasive approach, um, less complications, and shorter hospital stay, and it's more convenient for the patient. Several observational studies and few randomized cl clinical trials have been conducted to compare those treatment strategies. So when it comes to strategy bypass versus endovascular, um, the literature is quite, uh, uh, we, ha we don't have that many trials, but they were presented now uh, um, with the previous two uh, uh, presentations. The first trial was the BASIL trial, long time ago, uh, conducted randomized vein uh, patients to, uh, with femoropopletal artery disease, uh, um, mostly with tissue loss, so it's critical limb ischemia patient population. Um, to bypass surgery using an autologous vein graft uh, versus uh, uh, endovascular therapy using only plain balloon angioplasty. So quite, um, quite strict uh, um, treatment strategies. And the primary endpoint was amputation-free survival and was uh, follow-up for two years and extended up to five years. Uh, no stents were used in this clinical trial. And after two years, there was a comparable outcome. However, with an extended follow-up, there was a mortality um, and uh, amputation-free survival benefit favoring bypass surgery over uh, plain balloon angioplasty. The follow-up trial was also mentioned uh, here, was presented last year at AHA, um, uh, and showed, uh, again, two strategies uh, in comparison. However, when they stratified the patients for a bypass surgery, it was um, predefined. Uh, if you have a good vein, you get um, assigned to cohort A, and you get an autologous vein graft. If you um, don't have an appropriate vein, you get assigned to a prosthetic graft material. However, when we look at the endovascular therapy, best endovascular therapy, it was actually selected or decided upon by the, by the treating physician or the operator on the table using the variety of, of devices we have, POBA, DCB, atherectomy, BMS, the DES, uh, covered stent, and was all at the discretion of the treating operator. And I uh, magnified the major adverse limb event um, outcomes for uh, this uh, study. And as you can see here in cohort A, we have um, 42% in uh, autologous vein graft, 57% in uh, end best endovascular therapy, and was statistically in favor of uh, bypass surgery. However, when you, when you look at patients in cohort two, there was no difference with 42 and 47%. So now when we look in more detail between the two cohorts, we see that the treatment effect for bypass surgery was quite homogeneous, with 42.6 versus 42.8. But when we look at endovascular therapy, which is supposed to be the same in patient, both patient cohort, we have an almost 10% higher risk of, uh, of major adverse limb events in cohort A. Probably this has, uh, has something to do with the, with the, with the trial design and uh, how it was selected. So best endovascular therapy. We have a huge variety, and I um, put uh, several, uh, several um, citations down here selecting we compared uh, stents versus PTA, uh, DES versus, uh, versus uh, PTA, and, and uh, bare metal stents, covered stents versus uh, nitinol stents, DCBs versus D DES, um, and some atherectomy devices and lithiotripsy were also used in, in some uh, studies. But when we come a little bit more into detail and say, okay, how about stenting as, a, as the best endovascular approach for patients and compare it with bypass? We have uh, six randomized clinical trials, all of a small sample size, all were only powered for primary patency, which is to me a, a surrogate endpoint and not a major endpoint. Um, and all those trials were conducted mostly, or, uh, actually all, all of them were conducted in Europe. And uh, we thought about pooling patient level data from all those trials uh, to increase uh, the sample size and have some more power to investigate major, major adverse limb events and amputation-free survival. 
So we contacted the PIs of all those um, uh, trials and five uh, PIs were able to uh, share their data with us. So we got the data transferred to Mount Sinai. And uh, this is a list of all the trials which were used. And the clinical and procedural uh, results for, the, for this study showed initially, we, uh, as you can see here, the clinical characteristics were quite comparable between both groups. This study was majorly conducted, these studies were majorly conducted in intermittent claudication patients, so the credibility is more for claudication patients rather than CLI. Uh, for, um, for stenting for patients, 30% uh, received BMS, 26% covered stents, and 41% uh, drug eluting stents. For vein graft patients, uh, for uh, bypass surgery patients, um, half and half received synthetic and uh, or uh, autologous vein graft. Lesion uh, type with uh, occlusive form was more uh, predominant in the surgery group. However, lesion length and task 2 and uh, 2D lesions were comparable between both groups. And here's the primary endpoint um, of that study. Uh, major adverse limb events after two years showed no statistical significant difference between both groups. And so was the behavior regarding amputation-free survival, um, also comparable between both groups after two years of follow-up. Um, and here's a breakdown of all the individual components of the primary endpoint. Death, amputation, reinterventions were equal with or without adjustment. Uh, however, primary patency was more in favor of bypass surgery, uh, even after adjustment. But when we take the patients out from the endovascular group who had the technical failure, which were 7% of those uh, patient cohorts, um, the, primary end, the primary patency endpoint becomes not statistically significant. Uh, mean hospital duration was significantly higher in patients uh, who underwent bypass surgery as compared to stenting. And so were also the safety endpoints which were pre-selected in those trials, all cause mortality, any bleeding, any infections, or the composite of all three uh, within 30 days were in favor of endovascular therapy. And important to mention is that all-cause mortality was not, not, not different between both groups. However, bleeding and infections were driving this endpoint. Um, and this is also the, uh, the primary endpoint of male uh, comparing stenting with bypass surgery in certain subgroups. And I highlighted two uh, interesting subgroups, the diabetics patients. They uh, tend to uh, fare better with bypass surgery, and so were the patients in the task uh, C and B category having, having a favorable outcome using bypass surgery. This, is, this was a quite interesting uh, finding of the study, but uh, we are looking in more detail into that and uh, to, to analyze uh, this, this subset of patients. Um, finally, to conclude, patients with symptomatic uh, PAD involving the femoral popliteal segment, uh, endovascular therapy with stent implantation compared to bypass surgery uh, is associated with a comparable two-year major adverse uh, limb events um, or amputation-free survival and associated with lower uh, risk of early complications and shorter length of hospitalization. Our pooled analysis provides further support uh, um, for the efficacy and safety of uh, endovascular therapy with stent implantation as an alternative for bypass surgery in this patient population. And I can um, on, uh, share my, my uh, impression, like the previous two uh, uh, talkers, uh, that the best revascularization strategy is still out there and we have a lot of work to do to discuss and to come up with plans for what is the best therapy for those patients. Thank you very much.